Welcome to e.g. and friends. My name is Eldon Killian. I'll be your host. And today we're going to do the year in review where I rank every game that I played over the last year, 2020. Um, this is a video one of a six video series uh, where we are going to just go over all these games that I played and tell you where they are. Uh, today's title is Fire, Fire Everywhere. Um, all of the titles uh, have to do with the year. And uh, remember a year ago when... Uh, Australia was on fire. It was a terrible thing. Oh, if we only knew. Anyway, these are my least favorite games that I played this year. Uh, again, this is not every game I've ever played, just the games I played last year. Uh, quick tale of the tape. I played 148 different games. I put them in six different tiers. They are not uh, equal tiers. Um, so this is, um, I just kind of put them where I thought they would slot in. Uh, and so these are the games I, I like the least. Um, uh, over the course of the entire uh, series, there's going to be, uh, of the 148 games I played, 76 of them were new to me. Um, so some of my all-time favorite games are not on this list because uh, I didn't get a chance to play them last year uh, because uh, I kind of focused on newer games. So I played 76 uh, new-to-me games. Um, not a ton of 2020 releases. Uh, I, I'm not one of those people that goes out and buys games immediately. Uh, but uh, there's about 10 or so that are 2020, quite a few 2019s, uh, so games that were hot last year, uh, or 2019, uh, that I finally got to table, um, but yeah, and then some really old ones, uh, we'll see that I just barely played for the first time, uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, uh, first one is, uh, Go Fish, uh, I got suckered into playing a game of Go Fish, um, just a couple months ago. I guess you have to do it every once in a while just to remind yourself uh, how terrible uh, some games can be. Go Fish is a terribly designed card game. Um, there's probably something to say that uh, little kids, it's a good thing to teach little kids uh, to learn how to lose cards, to learn how to be looking for a goal, I guess. And it's a very simple game in that way. Uh, but the fundamental design of the game is garbage and trash. Uh, it's unfair uh, once you kind of figure out what you're doing. It's not fun for certain people who kind of get hosed over and over again anyway go fish terrible game uh uno 147 out of 148 um i just don't like uno that much uh but i i, I end up playing that quite a bit with people who do like it uh it is a game that uh, some of my younger kids uh still enjoy uh, and ask for and um i like to play with them so i play uno um, again, same thing. Uh, Uno has some fundamental uh, design flaws uh, that make it not fun over the long run. Um, but yeah, Uno. Uh, 146, Bookworm. This is one of my new-to-me games. Um, I picked this up as sort of a filler on a uh, order I put in. Um, I was, But it looked interesting to me. I, I saw that it wasn't rated very highly. It doesn't have a lot of uh, ratings on BGG. So I don't think people have seen it, but it's not worth it. Um, so what you do is you roll these dice, then you try to get words that match the category uh, that start with that letter, and then you're just kind of taking those letters back and forth. You can steal them back and forth, but when you steal them, they get a point. Um, I don't know. Uh, the one saving grace is this might be something uh, situationally. If some were down the road in my uh, teaching career, I this might have like a, a space like in a classroom or as something you know it's semi-educational justify it a lot of way it, it's just not a great game though uh, especially if you're trying to play it as a game it just doesn't work as well as i would have hoped uh number 145 unstable unicorns um this is just one of those silly games where like you're playing cards and trying to get them in front of you and you're trying to get the win condition uh but uh, sort of like um, a munchkin type game or killer bunnies type game. Uh, but I just, I don't love these games because they're too random for me. And, um, you know, you, it has like this guise of having a strategy, but I don't know. And it also has like uh, these cards that it's like these nope cards, I think they're called or something like that, where you're just like, you try to do something to, and it just doesn't happen because they have this card. And I don't know. There's like too many of them. I think it's okay if it has that card, but there's just too many of them. It's like constantly can never do what you want to do. And I never had the cards for some reason. Anyway, 
145. 144, uh, Pictopia, Disney Edition. This is a trivia game. Is all about uh, This version is all about Disney. Uh, it tried to make this more of a game, game, but it's frustrating. Uh, it's like you have these bidding tokens where you can be like, oh, I think I know the answer to this one. I'll bid a little bit more. But there's no. the only downside is you don't get to move forward if you get it wrong. Um, but it almost ends up being kind of random. And some questions are just way harder than others. And a lot of the questions, you're like dragging other people along with you. Like everyone gets to be a part of it. And I don't know. They tried. They tried too hard probably. Uh, or the person who, who, who designed this did not um, have a lot of experience playing uh, better games. Um, but, you know, for a Disney trivia game, it, it was what it was. Uh, 143, Apples to Apples Jr., um, like I said, I've just kind of gotten over apples to apples. Uh, we play the junior version with our kids sometimes. Um, it's a good vocabulary builder. It's a good uh, um, game for that, and they still have fun with it, and so I'm going to be there with them. Uh, it's not so much that this is a bad game. It's just a game that I've played a lot of over the years, and it's just kind of moving past it. Anyway, apples to apples junior. Uh, 142, Wyatt Earp. This is one of the mystery rummy games. That is not in the mystery rummy line, but it, it plays similar. Um, I don't love rummy. Uh, this one was really frustrating in the way that it played out. Um, I just remember being frustrated the entire game. I didn't feel like me uh, losing, or, or even if I had won, uh, had much to do with anything that I did. Uh, we were just playing and playing a rummy game and getting lucky. Um, and... Uh, Sort of like, I think the little twist of the game, uh, the, the twist to the rummy game, wasn't that interesting to me. Anyway, Wyatt Earp, 142. Uh, 141, Throw Throw Burrito. Uh, this is not a great game. Um, it can be a fun game, though. I, I've only played it a couple of times, uh, or no, I played it one time, uh, is all I've played it. Uh, and it was kind of fun. Uh, I, you know, I meant to get this out into, uh, over the holidays, we had some. Uh, family over and stuff and I meant to get this one out but it's never quite happened uh, but it is silly fun uh, you're playing really fast uh, sort of in like the vein of like happy salmon uh, which you know is, is fine for what it is uh, the one criticism I'd have I, I thought this kind of it, it like goes past its welcome like the game is just longer uh, you know the 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 trick to the pony is that you have to throw these soft burritos at each other I don't know it's kind of fun in the moment uh but, uh, and I can see with the right group of people, this would just be like a barrel of laughs in the right moment. Um, as a game, though, you know, it's meant to be fun. Uh, number 140, uh, the five-second rule. Uh, in the five-second rule, you are trying to list off, uh, I think you're trying to get three things that match the category in five seconds, and you only have five seconds, and if you don't do it, the next person gets to go, um, you know, it's a, it's a trivia game, and as such, it has its limitations. Uh, the one thing I will say is everybody was having fun at the table, uh, for the most part, I think. Everybody was laughing. Everybody was into it. Um, and uh, I don't know. I was really good at it. Um, my mind was on fire that day, I guess. But, um, you know, it's an okay, uh, uh, like, trivia. It, it's a good way to kill an hour uh, as a game, though. Again, just... It's kind of a basic design. Uh, the way that like, you can steal the points uh, is kind of weird and odd, and maybe there's a better way to do it. Um, if there's like a way to play this cooperatively, maybe it might be even more fun to me. But anyway, five second rule. It is what it was. Uh, Battleship. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, since last week, this uh, I did these rankings just a couple days ago, and BGG has over twenty thousand games ranked, and uh, this one was one nineteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. Uh, Board Game Geek does not like this game, uh, and I and I don't love it either. There's a lot of luck to it. Um, I do think of it as a foundational game, though. I, I think every kid in their game playing experience should play Battleship at least once or twice, uh, or a few, enough times to understand uh, what the luck is. And what the, there is a little bit of strategy to do a little bit better at it. It is kind of blind luck, but um, like search patterns and stuff like that. Um, you know, play it a few times with your kids. I do think it's useful for that um, as an adult. 
Uh, the version I have is kind of interesting. Uh, you have there's these islands all over, and then you at the very end you have to shoot at the islands and try to get their guys. So after you sink all the ships, they're sort of like up to five more turns that the other person is, is randomly kind of guessing at these different islands. Uh, and so you can kind of sneak in a win if it's really close. Uh, just, but again, it's just getting lucky. You're just guessing because you don't have any inside information in, anyways. Anyway, Battleship. Uh, 138 Bloom. Uh, this is a roll and write game uh, from Game Right. Uh, this is it comes in the same box like Quix comes in and uh, Roll in America and Quingo and a few others, uh, which is a nifty little box design. Uh, I was a little disappointed in this one. I, I, I you know, Quix and and, and uh, Quingo and and those are games that I enjoy. This one was missing a, a little something. I want to give it another try. Um, it just, it wasn't exciting. It wasn't, I don't know. It was, it was that. I probably need to give it another go. But uh, this was Bloom uh, from uh, Game Right number 138. Uh, 137, Yago Pool. This is like playing pool with your fingers. It's the uh, size of a small table. Uh, and you're flicking or pushing the, the balls and you're trying to get a uh, tic-tac-toe. So you try to get your color three in a row or the majority of the of the pots. And uh, I would like this more because I'm terrible at it. So, so, so terrible at it um, that it's it's not quite so fun. It's just a lot of, oh, I hit the ball. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I can't get in there. I can't get the angle to get in there. It, go, it goes on for longer than it should. Um, anyway, Yago Pool. Maybe if I was better, I'd like it more, but I, I played it a few times, and I'm just not. Um, number 136, Eminent Domain, Microcosm. Uh, I enjoy Eminent Domain quite a bit. Uh, this is like a two-player uh, micro game. Uh, there's like 18-ish cards, maybe a few more than that, uh, that you play with. And may, this might be a good game. The rule book I found extremely hard to follow and understand and maybe by the very end of the game after struggling through the rule book i thought i maybe understand how to play the game but i lost all of my spark to want to try to play it again uh, is what it came down to uh but yeah an emo domain microcosm this is a little bit older game uh but this is the first time i've had it on my shelf for a long time uh the rule book stopped me from playing it before and it's going to stop me from playing it in the future uh 135 big dig uh this was an impulse purchase um I uh, just thought it's a roll and write. I thought it looked interesting, and the play is is actually kind of interesting. You're kind of dig down on the ground uh, using these uh, like uh, Tetris like pieces, and you have to use that shape. And then you're digging down through the ground. And you're trying to uh, hit the different goals that you have at the beginning of the game. Uh, but it's a race game, and as a race, it ends immediately. But you take definitely. Uh, First player has a huge advantage. They you know, they can win uh, without anybody else ever having a turn. Uh, so they get an extra turn and they win. And that's exactly how it, I, I saw that as I was reading the rules. Like, that seems weird. That's exactly how it played out. Uh, the first player won. And I think we played twice and they won again. And I think that's a problem with the game design. Uh, otherwise, it might be a little bit higher on the list. But anyway, 135, big dig. Uh, I wanted to like that one a lot more. And uh, a short little episode today. This is uh, my worst games of 2020. Uh, fire, fire everywhere. And uh, this has been uh, E.G. and Friends. And then my name is Elden Killian. Where? I'm making a YouTube video, Bev. I really need to come up with a tagline.